Good day! Let us now proceed to the second part of our lesson on instructional materials in teaching science. As we answer the questions, what are the roles of instructional materials in teaching science to primary pupils? What are the guidelines to consider in selecting, preparing, and using instructional materials? And lastly, what are some tips for teachers in preparing, using, and developing instructional materials. We are going to start with the roles of instructional materials. First, instructional materials monitor the assimilation of information from the material to the mind. For example, the way pupils utilize the Play-Doh as molecules of solid, liquid, and gas can help monitor their understanding of how molecules are arranged in each phase of matter. The content is associated with the materials being used. IEMS also provides the content that conveys the essential knowledge and skills of a subject. Of course, the best example for this would be the textbook for the learners. In DepEd, we have the learner's material. IENs serve as delivery vehicles for instructional lessons or, in a constructivist way, as partners in the learning process. As you can see, the learners are using manipulatives for them to be able to construct on their own the lesson. The material could have had a motivating factor which is important in a constructivist lesson. IMs build more meaningful personal interpretations of life and his or her world. This is in congruence that IMs can support constructivist lessons. With IMs, we can bring even in visual symbols real life inside the classroom so students can find connections of classroom lessons to the realities outside. IMs can serve as a medium in representing what the learner knows and what he or she is learning. For example, we can provide a material for students to organize what they know and what they are learning. The lesson on vertebrates and invertebrates can be supplemented by a chart such that learners can evaluate their initial and emerging understanding about these classifications. Overall, IMs can support mass instruction, individualized learning, and group learning. These are areas where science teachers need to take advantage of so that they can also address the forces of learning and thinking skills, which are critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. From these roles, we can classify the instructional materials in science into four major types. We have concrete objects, representations of concrete objects and phenomena, descriptions of concrete objects and phenomena, and technological instructional media. Like in earth and space science, rocks can be easily found anywhere. That's why we can use it in our lessons. We can ask students to go outside the classroom with our guidance. Also, they can learn by studying a model that the teacher possibly bought or constructed on his or her own using available materials. With the considerations of the roles of IMs and the different IMs science teachers can use, we now proceed on selecting, preparing, using, and developing instructional materials. So in selecting and preparing your instructional material, here are some questions that you should address. First, do the materials fit the objectives? As in any teaching and learning process, we always start with our objectives. Materials 
should fit the objectives of the course, unit plan, and the lesson plan. Second, are the materials well organized? IMS would not be that effective in fulfilling its role if it is not properly placed based on the instructional process. It must relate facts to few basic ideas and concepts that are involved in our science lesson. Third, do the materials prepare the students for the presentation? If ever that you will be using an IM to prepare your students, make sure that they coincide with students' prior knowledge, and we can do that by looking at our past and present objectives and by using advanced organizers. Fourth, are the materials well designed? Producing your IMs entails a lot of creativity from the teacher with resourcefulness and careful planning. Therefore, teachers should follow basic principles of design such that the elements are properly arranged that can be easily understood by the students and that can be pleasing to their eyes. Fifth, have the materials been presented in a technically appropriate manner? Take note that your IMs should neither be over-presented nor under-presented. Sixth, do the materials provide sufficient repetition through examples, illustrations, questions, and summaries to enhance understanding of content? This is to address student diversity. Teachers should provide venues for differentiation in their IMs. If possible, there are opportunities for visual, auditory, and kinesthetic learners. Seventh, is the material suitable to the reading level of the students? Take note of your students' vocabulary skills. We need to use the right words especially for grade school learners. And last, does the difficulty of the materials match the abilities of the students? This is a very important consideration as your IMs must be motivating and interest-driven. Lastly, other guidelines in preparing and using IMs are as follows. Look at your purpose while you are teaching this particular science lesson. Define your objectives that will guide you all throughout the teaching and learning process. Flexibility and diversity to accommodate different learners and different circumstances. The development of your IMs should be logical and should always consider the amount and difficulty of your content. Always guide your learners in using your IM. You should be an effective facilitator in your classroom. Lastly, evaluate all the processes involved in your IMs, from selection, to preparation, to development, to utilization. The results of evaluation are important to produce a better IM for future use or for future development of new IMs. Always remember that you are developing your IM primarily for your learners. Always consider them. Thank you very much. Here are the references for the lesson on instructional materials. Let's meet again next time.